It's Matt from Optimus Futures. Today, I am going to talk about Chat GPT and using it as a tool to potentially improve your skills as a day trader. A few things I have to tell you about this tool. Number one, it is not an accurate tool. You cannot treat it as the Bible and there are a lot of inaccuracies in the descriptions that it gives and it is recommended that you use your discretion when um, you get answers. So that's first thing. Second thing is, as you see right here, it says limited knowledge of world and events after 2021. So basically there's nothing before, I'm sorry, there's nothing after 2021. So just keep that in mind. Still, I think that Despite all the limitations that it has, it, it is absolutely an amazing tool. It's an amazing tool because it's a machine and it thinks in an objective way and it can give you a lot of useful input, both on the trading side, from the technical side, and also acting periodically as your mentor. Because a lot of people want to get mentors, pay thousands of dollars. Now you have something that you can actually consult with and get feedback on your action and this tool what i like about it it is very very deep now i'm not going to get into or debate the discussions of ai or the implications of it or what it's turning the world into i just want to make the best use out of it as a day trader and today i'm going to uh, show you potentially again how to improve your skills and also to teach you how you can communicate with this machine. It is not a search engine. Basically, it is um, a machine learning vehicle that allows to gather data from everything that was put into it and give answers in a very coherent way and in a very objective way. Again, pay attention to inaccuracies and let's get started. So. This is the first screen that you will see. You have to register. It is free. Um, there is a paid version for it. However, you can use the uh, free one. You can start with the free one. The only limitation is basically, um, I believe it's uh, on a different server. It could be slower during certain times. So I pay for it. So I, I, and it's $20 a month or something like that. And you should uh, consider that. But again, it is a free tool and we can start over here. So the first thing we can do is, first of all, we can interact in a very general way and ask a very general question. So let's do that, okay? I am a day trader or wish to become one. What do you think I should focus on first, okay? So now we've asked it a question and now it's going to go into the answers, right? Very good answer so far. So you develop a trading plan. Um, obviously for a lack of time, I'm not going to read every single post, but I just want to give you the the general idea here, how to interact with it. So here we are, develop a trading plan, learn the basics, practice demo account, manage your risk, stay up to date with market news, be disciplined, right? Very general ideas. Those of you who have been trading for a long time probably know about those things. But again, if you're a beginner, it's always a good, um, way to start and even if you're experienced nothing wrong to get a fresh reminder once in a while so now that it gave us all the answers let's focus on one of the answers here and continue the conversation so not only did you get the answers here you also get a way to interact with it and focus on specific things that he's talking about so for example number four here manage your risk Okay, and it says here successful day traders know how to manage risk. It means setting stop loss orders to limit potential losses 
and avoiding trading with money that you can't afford to lose. Okay, so um, he talks about risk management here. So let's get a few more details about it. So um, let's say when you say in number four, and he will know what, uh, what you mean. Um, I assume you mean risk management, right? Just, okay, yes, that's correct, right? So managing risk is an essential aspect of trading, okay. It helps reserve capital and reduce the impact of inevitable losses, okay. Now, let's go a little bit deeper with that, okay? Now you understand the concept, you understand that risk management is very important, but how? What do you do with it? So here's another question. And again, the level of your creativity, imagination, and depth would be directly correlated to the results that you get out of this machine. So you have to ask it the right way. You can give it very short description and ask for an answer, or you can give it very lengthy one, but slowly we will get into it. So here, um, it talks about risk management. Let's ask another question, that because we're curious, we understand risk management, but we don't know what to do with it, right? Okay, so you manage risk, how, okay? So let's ask, how do um, professional traders manage risk? Okay, and now it will go into this answer, okay? So here's a few ways to um, diversify with risk. I'm sorry, that's not the right word I was looking for. Here's a few ways to manage risk. Okay, so let's wait for it to finish, but uh, number two here, is very crucial, position sizing, right? Now, you don't have to be a genius or an experienced trader when somebody tells you, you know, you have to manage risk, meaning that you cannot take an investment and fully diversify it. So if you're a stock trader, you don't wanna take the money that you have and just put it in one stock. If you're a futures trader, you, you don't wanna look for, um, you want to ask for low day trading margins periodically, but you don't want to take all your capital and just fill it up with contracts, right? Utilize, I mean, maxing it out. That's not the goal of trading. So managing risk has to do with it. So it says here, professional traders determine the amount of money they're willing to risk on each trade based on their overall portfolio size and risk tolerance. That helps limit potential losses on any one trade. So um, one of the, I would say, um, uncertainties when you place a stop loss is that you don't know where the stop loss is going to hit. So while you're trying to determine where the risk is, it doesn't guarantee that it will get filled there. So what you don't want to do is basically take your entire account and just, you know, do um, each trade as, as one bet, right? So here you have other ways, you know, that you can consider risk to reward ratios, right? Professional traders use to reward ratios to determine the potential profit. So that's another way to manage risk. You say, okay, I'm not gonna get into a trade unless I get a risk reward of one to five, right? Or at least one to three, right? Some people go one to two with some setups. Those are, I would say, more professional and they can utilize it. But I think if you're a beginner, you should look for higher risk reward uh, to minimize the amount of trades that you do and look for the right setups. So here, here it is. Now here there are some things, right, um, like hedging. Unfortunately for day traders, this is what I mean. You have to be very specific and filter the um, results that you are getting. So in day trading, there's not a lot of hedging you can do, right? If you trading things like micro futures, you can't really buy options on them. I mean, you can, but it's really not that practical in my opinion to use it as a day trading strategy, although on a long-term strategy it could work for some. So now we understand the concept of uh, risk management and we wanna go and ask another question, right? So uh, one of the things it says here, it's stop loss orders. And so I know that a lot of beginner traders 
try to avoid stop losses because they say I always get stopped out so I'm going to avoid it which is a disaster not to use it um, so you have to get used to the fact that many times in trading you will get stopped out but you have to manage risk and hopefully a good trades will compensate for it so you can say something along the lines of in the past I avoided stop losses was it a mistake All right so now you're gonna okay so now it, it's giving you an answer avoiding stop losses generally considered a risky strategy right vulnerable to losses and so forth one thing I want you to pay attention here is that now we have a conversation in the context right we have a conversation in the context, so all the answers that it's giving you here, or at least that it should give you, is all done in the context of this conversation. This machine has the ability to remember it, right? If you were to ask those questions each time on, on a, it's called a new chat, so it would might give you different answers, but it gives you these kind of answers when it's in the context of the conversation that we're having. So again, it gives you the ability here to um, it, to ask those specific questions and continue the dialogue. And one of the things that it says here, it's important to remember, stop loss are, are not a guarantee that you won't lose money on the train, but it can help you limit your losses to predetermined amount, right? So this is important to remember that it has to be part of your strategy. Okay, now let's assume now that you're having this conversation, you also start to remember some of the other mistakes that you have done, right? So let's say you're a day trader, you're trying to come back into futures, and now you wanna do things better, and now you're saying, you know what, one of the mistakes that I've done is that I adopted too many strategies, which it's a mistake that many traders do. So what they do, they start with day trading, you know, then you know they might use one method, uh, you know, regular technical analysis, then they go to order flow, then to go to others and so forth. So they change it all the time instead of sticking with one because what they think is that it's really about the method and not the trading skills. But it's really more about the trading skills and, and not the method, in, in my opinion, or at least my observation after being so many years of doing this. So the method is important, but applying it right and consistently is even more important. So here we have a chance to interact and ask the machine, right? So you can also say, you know, give it basically some insight about you in the past, right? And you can say, I used to switch from one method to another. By the way, if you have spelling errors, it knows how to recognize spelling errors. It still gives you the right answer. Okay, so in the past, I used to switch from one method to another okay um, and we're not going to ask any questions right we're just going to say that's what I used to do let's see what the machine says in the context of this conversation okay and now again it says switching from trading method to another is a common mistake that many traders make, particularly beginners. Well, it's important to experiment with different trading strategies and techniques to find what works best for you. Constantly switching between methods can be counterproductive and lead to poor results. Keep that in mind. That's really good advice. And so here are the answers, right? So you have lack of consistency, lack of mastery. You don't get to master one thing. You get frustrated. Uh, you become emotional and then you overanalyze things, right? So now it's really important to understand that now the depth and of every single topic here, how deep you can go into it, right? So now you have four new reasons and if you want to ask about any of those four things because it pertains to you more than the other reasons, you can go and ask it, right? Um, um, okay, sorry, I'm just looking here because I created a few questions ahead of time just to help you out so it will be useful. Okay, so now you want to go, um, let's say, in a completely different direction 
and just ask a few other questions just popped into your mind, right? Again, but in the context of this conversation. Okay, so um, I'm trying to come back to day trading futures again. Again. What three indicators you recommend I focus on? Okay? So now you're coming back, you've made the mistakes, you're reading about discipline, risk management, you know, not switching from one method to another. And now you're saying, okay, you know what? I just want to go with some basics here, right? What is some basic technical analysis? So what three indicators do you recommend I focus on? And again, it's in the context of this conversation. Let's see what it, what it says, okay? Okay, so clearly there are some things that are integrated into this AI or this artificial intelligence model that he knew people would start asking it, you know, I'm about to buy this or that or short this or that and what do you think? So they don't want, they don't want to take any responsibility obviously for things, right? They're not financial advisors, nor, nor is AI a licensed broker or anything of that sort. Not that advisors or licensed brokers necessarily know better than you. Um, but here we are, you know, it says I cannot provide personalized investment. Okay. And then it says, okay, the indicators you choose will depend on your trading style. And then it, with all the disclaimers, it says, okay, moving average, relative strength index and Bollinger bands. Okay. Fantastic. Now you can focus on those three. Now you can say you can regenerate the response if you want. If you didn't like a response of anything, you can regenerate the response, but just remember it will eliminate this, um, the response, the last response. It's not going to give you another response. It's going to do that. I'm not going to do that because I think it's a good response. It gave you some, uh, basics, um, of, of what it is. Okay. So now, um, you know, so it gave you that and now let's focus on again, go into depth into, um, what it says over here about um, the technical indicators. And let's ask it a question, okay? Um, let's say if I was to use number one, and obviously it knows number one, right? What time frame should I use for the moving averages, okay? Okay, we're gonna use moving averages. Let's do that. Okay, so now it tells you, well, it depends what you wanna do, right? If you wanna do short-term moving averages, you have the option of 10 and 20. Longer term, 50 and 200. Um, and then you have multiple averages, right? So here you have somebody says, look, you can actually take a combination of a 10 day moving average and a 50 day moving average. Again, these are just examples. You know, you cannot treat it as the Bible and just take it from here, apply it to the machine and say, this is going to work. A lot of it is your skills. Machines will not make you more disciplined. It just gives you perspective and thought. And I'm happy that it's here because a lot of people are going to pay mentors thousands of dollars, technical indicators, thousands of dollars, which is a complete colossal waste of time, waste of time, because you can now build all those things yourself. All those things where people call it proprietary indicators are really a combination of these type of indicators. So you can get discipline, you have feedback and so forth, right? Okay. So, um, now that we have, moving averages, right? And you've heard about moving averages, but you're just curious about, you know, what are the limitations of moving averages, right? So you can ask it a question, but let's give it some context. So first of all, we're going to say thank you. Okay. And this is not because I'm polite to a machine, although we have to be polite to everyone. It's because I'm 
giving it a signal that I appreciate its input. So the input that it gave me, I consider it good and it can act on this type of information again. Okay, and now I'm gonna ask it another question. What are some of the misconceptions that traders have about moving averages? Okay, now you just ask him the question. So here, right, they think that, you know, here are some of the misconceptions and it's so important, right? You can apply it to any indicator, you can ask it in that way. And so at the end of this video, what you should do, while it's still fresh in your mind, try to think of the questions that you wanna ask it, at what order, you don't want to overwhelm it together with gazillion um, questions. What you want to do is basically give it some sort of a brief intro maybe about yourself, describe yourself, who you are, what you want to achieve, um, and then go into the questions according to the res responses. You might find it very interesting, but if you pair your questions ahead of time, you'll also know when to ask it. So here, right? Moving averages always provide accurate signals. Obviously, that's a misconception. Moving averages work equally in all market conditions, right? Um, moving averages always indicate a trend reversal, right? Moving averages are only useful for short-term trading. So here are some of the misconceptions that people have, right, about moving averages. Knowing the limitations of technical analysis will help you a lot with your risk management, right? So that's, that is really, really important. Now let's go into something a little bit different. I'm, I keep on talking here about the fact that this could be a mentor. Um, let me show you a question that it can, it can help you potentially as, as a mentor. So something you wanna do at the end of the day, right? Um, so let's say, okay, I, let's say thank you again. Thank you. Okay. Okay, this helps. Again, we're sending it a signal. A machine does not understand gratitude, but again, I say thank you just to say this information was good. Let's keep on going with this logic. Thank you. Um, I have traded today the micro NQ, micro Yes. And micro CL. Okay. The best trades that occurred occurred were in NQ and Q and the worst trades were in yes cl broke even okay now you gave it this information right now again this is not a crystal ball it just some of the information it can give you some sort of a feedback but again you can make it a little bit lengthier and give it a little bit more information okay the best trades occurred 9 to 11 a.m. Okay. Eleven a.m. The worst trades were two to four p.m. Two to four p.m. Let's see what it says. And look what good, and again, the machine doesn't know you, but it, it understands what you're trying to get at. So if you notice here, this answer, it's important to analyze your trades, identify pattern of trends in your trading behavior and the markets you are trading. Isn't that good, right? So if, let's say you love the ES market. You're in love with the ES market, but your best trades are on NQ. Well, you know, that's where the emotions come into play, where you, where you just have to accept the fact that your method 
is maybe better on NQ than ES, right? Uh, it's important to continue analyzing and evaluating your performance over time. This can help you refine your trading soon and improve your case. Now, it gave us this information that basically is a recommendation to keep on following the patterns of our trading. Okay, let's go a little bit further and look what it can do. Can you create a table that I can place my best trades and worst trades according to the um, to the time during the day. Okay, now you ask it for a table. Okay, so here's a table. Time of day, market. Best trade, worst trade, right? And again, remember the context. You gave it some information. Now it gave you this thing, right? It's incredible, right? So now it says you can fill the table, right? Okay. And um, you can, again, you can say regenerate response. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. I mean, you can always stop this video and copy it if you want. But let's say we reg regenerate the response, right? Which means we didn't like the sensor, okay? Here's an example. Okay, now it's trying again. Okay, maybe you like this result, maybe you're not. You can keep on doing it all the time, right? Maybe this is simpler. Maybe this is something you like better, right? Maybe it gives you the ability to do this. Okay, so was this response better? Let's assume that, okay, it was better. Now we gave it an idea that they like this better. Um, you can give it, it collects information about, um, you know, not you specifically, but it collects information from all the people that giving it feedback. So you're included in it. But you can say yes or no whether you like it here or not. Okay, so now we have a table and um, we created all those things. We've asked it all those questions. And again, there's just so many things you can do with it. And the last thing that I want to show you, again, going back to the mentor, right, is basically giving the machine a chance to act as somebody else. So let me give you an example. If I had the worst trading day with um, I shouldn't ask it like that if I had the worst trading day in terms of performance and I okay you know what let me start over here because I have a direction now I know Assume you are a professional day trader who trades for a living, okay? If I came to you and asked you, uh, sorry, if I came to you and told you I had a bad day, in terms of my performance what would you ask me in order to evaluate evaluate my trading So now, here are some of the questions that a professional would ask you. What was your overall trading plan? What were the markets? What instrument did you trade? What was your entry and exit? 
How did you manage risk? Were you specific trades that caused you to lose money? Right? So now you have um, this perspective, right? And so it says, if you came to me and you asked a bad day in 2004, so I would first want to understand what you mean by bad day. And what specifically went wrong? Here are some questions. Evaluate. Now, let's, okay. Um, here are 10 very good questions that they gave you. Did you experience any? Number nine, did you experience any emotional reaction? Did you stick to your trading plan? Number eight. Number four, what was your entry and exit strategy, right? So now, basically, this is what a mentor would basically come to you and ask you. Now, this AI has enough tools and gathered enough information, you know, to come out here with something very, very um, good for you to examine. And again, you can say, give me 50 questions. It will come up with 50 questions. It's, it could be overwhelming. Some of them might be, you know, not something that you want to read or just a waste of time because it's just too many factors. But I, you don't want to overwhelm yourself, right? And it's very exciting to go there and start talking to it. But what you need to do is really take the practical information out of it. It's very, very important. And again, filter and discern the information that it's giving you. So now that we know what a professional trader would give you, um, would tell you in terms of feedback, let's start attacking it from a different angle, maybe from a psychological one, because those are very, those are specific strategy questions. So let's ask it, you know, if you were a psychologist, what would you ask, okay? If you were a psychologist, what questions would you ask me, right? So now, hopefully, because we're talking about the context of trading, I hope the machine understands, right? That I'm not just asking it anything, but specifically for trading, right? So let's see. Okay, so those are the things, right? Here are some of the psychological aspects of trading um, that you would basically have here, right? Very good questions. How are you feeling about your trading? How did you respond to the losses? That's very important, right? Because here, look at number two. Did you feel the urge to continue trading to make up for your losses? Or did you feel discouraged um, and want to stop trading altogether? So we obviously know about that syndrome where we go into losses and then we try to recover or we just like, we can't take it anymore, forget it, you know? So, um, so those are the things that you can obviously use um, it for. Again, the tool is open to your imagination and what you want to make out of it, right? But I would suggest to start using it um, as a tool. You can collect data. What I'm going to do in, the, in future videos, um, I'm going to show how it can actually play with data. So I'm just kind of building myself a video strategy now to show you how to do that so we can look at your performance and trading at what has happened and the numbers and, and see, you know, act like a trading journal. Um, nothing replaces a trading journal so you can see it, you know, because you can have a lot of variables, but a lot of them could be imitated here as well. So hopefully um, you'll enjoy that video. I hope you like this video. I would like to share it with as many people as I can. So if you click the like button, if you like this video, I would really, really appreciate it. Um, any comments below would be appreciated as well. Again, you know, let's help everybody uh, become a better trader. So again, please click the like video and it will make you feel better about yourself as well. Because I put the effort and you put the effort to share it. That's it for now. This is Matt from Optimus Futures. We are a futures trading firm. would love to have your account. If you have general trading questions about futures, 
please go to our community. It's community.optimistfutures.com. If you want to open an account, go to optimistfutures.com. We have our own platform, Optimist Flow. We're trading with, and it's very good, and it's free. So, again, thank you for watching the video. I wish you the best of luck today in trading, and I'll see you on um, the next uh, videos that I'll be making. Goodbye, and have an awesome day. Take care. Bye.